Hey guys, so today we'll be looking at coplanar vectors. Alright, so in lower level, you learn that vectors act linear. So if they're going in the same direction, you add to get the resultant. If they're going in opposite directions, then you subtract in order to get the resultant. But we have vectors that actually occupies two planes at once. Right? That's the meaning of coplanar vectors. So that means you can act in the x, the y, or the z plane more than one occasion. Right? So we're looking at resolving vectors that have instances where they are coplanar vectors uh, to find the resultant vector from those. Right? But before we move to that, vectors. What are vectors? So vectors are quantities that have magnitude and a direction. So magnitude means the size, the number that you write, right? And the direction means what direction is this quantity going, right? And then we have scalar vectors, which are just ve scalar quantities, which are just quantities that have just magnitude or size. So examples of scalar, we have time, temperature, right? Length, so those things, current, those things are scalar quantities. When we look at vector quantities, we talk about momentum, we talk about force, acceleration, displacement. So all these things can be grouped in terms of scalar or vectors. So the main purpose of this lesson today is to revise how to resolve vectors, right? So we resolve vector to get one, and that one vector is called the resultant vector. So we're going to look at resolving vectors that are acting coplanar to each other, all right? So, before we start, let's look at vector A, all right? And we're going to compare it with vector B and vector C. Now, you should know that vector B is acting horizontal, right? So there is no lift A by saying the f of B. Alright, let's use, so let's say vector B in the x plane, right? Let's give it a number, let's call it 5 newtons. It's just 5 newtons. So if we look at vector in the y plane, there is no lift in this vector, so therefore it is 0 newtons. Let's look at C. Let's say C is also 5. So the B in the X plane, B, C, C, sorry. So C here is going vertical. So that means there is no spread in our horizontal. So that is 0 Newton. And C near Y would be the 5. But if we compare B and C now to A, we know that we can actually get B and C from A because A again, we're going to have at 5 newtons. We know that A actually is going up and it actually is going to your right. So we have an X component and a Y component to A. So that's the reason why it's called a whole planar because A now has a y component and an x component. So the purpose of this is to see how we can find these components to get our values, right? So this vector is acting at an angle away from one of the planes. So if we're given theta acting away from x plane, then we note that this here is a right angle triangle, right? So this is your y, same here, and this is your x. So that means if we're finding our x component, which is our adjacent to our angle, and this 5 or e is our hypotenuse because it's opposite to the right angle, then adjacent hypotenuse, that's our cos. So cos theta will be equal to your x component over your value of a. So therefore, x will be a cos 
theta and of such then y would be e sine theta right so we're using these identities or these formulas regular in resolving vectors right but this is just more than one vector all right so our question states that we find the resultant vector acting on the object based on these forces right so we have two forces acting on an object so we can treat it as two single forces f2 f1 so f2 we know is going in the vertical plane while f1 is acting at an angle 30 degrees so f2 resembles our c vector that we did before so it only has a y of 5 and no x, 0, right? Now f1 both has x and a y component. So if we find 1 is equal to f1 cos theta. So f1 is 6, cos theta is 30, so we get 5.20 newtons, right? And we'll do the same for our fy. So f1 of y would now be f1 sine theta. f1 is still 6 sine 30. And in this case, we get 3 newtons. Right? So now, since we have a y here and a y here, we need to find what's the resultant. Right? So we know for f2, y is going up. And f1, y is also going up. So because both going up, we would know that the total, total y would be 5 plus 3. And we get 8 newtons. And then the total x would be 0 and 5.2. So it's just 5.2 newtons. Right? So the final thing now is that we have our x and our y, so we can construct, so our y is going up, which is 8 newtons, and our x will be going to your right at 5.2 newtons, so therefore resultant r would be acting between those two vectors. And in this case we use our Pythagoras theorem. That says r will be equal to the square root of 8 squared plus 5.20 squared. And when we calculate that, we get 9.54 newtons. So we have that as our resultant force acting on the object. But finally, you would have to know the angle at which it is acting. So let's make some space here. So the angle that it's acting would be, we can find this angle here in relation to your x component, or it could do for your y. So it chooses whatever you want, right? So let's do, so in this case, we're going to use sine. So we we'll sine in first, sine will be opposite, opposite would be the 8, so the hypotenuse r, 9.54, when we do that, we get 57 degrees. So final statement would be R is equal to 9.54 newtons acting 57 degrees away from the x plane. Alright, so for question 2, we get this. Situation. Now, in this case, we have three vectors, right? So we treat it the same way as our previous question. So we have vector A, B, and C. So again, we split up. So this is the same as vector A going vertically, vector B going that way, and vector C going in that direction. So from we can note, again, vector A resembles our first figure, like our C, 
fully acting in our vertical plane. So in this case, we're using displacement, so let's use D to not get confused. So D of A, we only have Y, and in that case, it would be 20 meters. All right, so therefore D, A of X, there is no X, so that's zero meters. All right, now let's look at B. So for B, it has both Y, and an X and the angle here is 45 degrees. So in this case, we can find D of B. Let's go with the X first. All right, so for B, then for the X is adjacent to the actor vector. So that is cos, so D cos theta, B is 40, cos, angle 45 degrees, we get 28.28. And we do the same thing for the y. In this case, it's sine, and we get the same answer, because cos 45 and sine 45 is the same 0 0.877 value, right? And then for c now, again, we can get our y and our x, and we know the angle here is 45 degrees. So for the C vector, the same again, we have the angle we're doing X first, so it is adjacent to the angle, so it's cos. So it's the 30 for C, sine cos, 45, we get 21.21. And for Y, it's C, sine theta, we get the same 21.21 meters. So now in this case, we have a lot of X and Y. Right? So we have three y's and only two x. So again, we look at the direction for our y's and our x. So let's go with y. So for b, y is going up. For c, y is going down. And for a, y is going up. So therefore, the net y or net y would be A plus B minus C. So A was 20 plus B, which is 28.28. And we subtract that from 21.21 and we get Twenty seven point zero seven meters. Right? Now we can do the net X. Right? So now this X is going that way, this is going that way, and there is no X. So both X is going the same direction. So we add twenty eight point two eight plus twenty one point two one. And we get 49.49 meters. Right? So now we have all our net values, x and y. We can find our final answer. So for y, y would be going up at 27.07 meters, and x would be going to your right at 49.49. So we get this here as our result of R. And remember, R will be given by the Pythagoras theorem, which is square root of 27.07 squared plus 49.49 squared. And we get that to be 6.21 meters. And finally, we would find the or angle. So in this case, we use sine again. Sine is our sine inverse, opposite, 
over 56.41 and we get 28.68 degrees okay and the last thing we'd write is our statement that r is equal to the r is 56.41 meters acting 28.68 degrees away from x plane This statement is very important because it tells us the direction it's going. Right? So this actually is just a summary of how to resolve any vector problem. So once it's a coplanar vector, we follow these simple steps, right? And you'll be able to answer any vector problem. So again, we know that vectors that's going in opposite direction. Once the object is in equilibrium, then their sum is zero, right? So the vector, total vector going left will be equal to total vectors going right. Total vectors going up will be equal to total vectors going down. So with that, I will leave in this question, question three, for you to try. And you can actually state your comments there to see what you, your answers will be for the value of P as well as the direction theta. Thank you.